In this lecture, I'm going to use the ideas we've developed about partition functions and Boltzmann factors and distribution functions in general and solve the problem of the two-state paramagnet. Okay, now in the lecture on histograms and distribution functions, I explained that you could find the average value of anything by <laughs> multiplying the value of the variable that you want times the function and then summing over all values. So that was discussed in histograms and distribution functions. And then of course in previous lectures on Boltzmann factors and partition functions, I said that the probability of a state S would be equal to 1 over the partition function Z times the Boltzmann factor E to the minus E sub S over KT. Okay. And it's generally true that then you could take that definition of the probability and find the average value for any variable, okay, by saying that it would be the summation of the variable times the probability of that state, which is given by 1 over z times the Boltzmann factor, okay? So we're now going to apply that and do the example of the two-state paramagnet. Now, I discussed the two-state paramagnet in several other lectures on this thermal physics channel. Okay, it's one of the simplest possible systems, and that's because there's only two possible energy states, which makes finding the partition function and the probabilities really easy. Okay, so the two possible energies in the two state paramagnet are when the magnetic moment mu is either parallel or anti parallel to the field. Remember that the lower energy state will be when the magnetic moment is aligned with the field. And then that value will be approximately minus mu times b, where mu is the magnetic moment and b is the magnetic field. And then the higher level energy state will be when the magnetic moment is anti-parallel to the field, um, and that will be plus mu b. Okay? So we can find our partition function because um, we just need to sum over those two possible energy states. And so z would be equal to the sum over all states of e to the minus es over kt, which would be e to the minus mu b over kt plus e to the plus mu b over kt. Now you might remember um, from uh, your calculus class or higher level mathematics class that this is actually the definition of the hyperbolic cosine. The hyperbolic cosine or cosh is defined above here in this little graphic. The cosh of x is equal to e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. And so this e to the minus mu b over kt plus e to the plus mu b over kt, that's just 2 times the hyperbolic cosine of mu b over kt. Now the probabilities associated with those states would be if the magnetic moment is aligned with the field, then it would be e to the minus minus mu b over kt, which is plus mu b over kt, divided by our partition function, which is 2 cosh of mu b over kt. So the probability that it's an upstate is there. The probability that it's anti-parallel to the field, or the down spin state, is e to the minus mu b over kt over 2 times the hyperbolic cosine of mu b over kt. All right? And this is just using the definitions that we've previously developed for probabilities and partition functions. Now, we can also find the average energy of uh, the states. So the average energy, or e bar, would be 1 over z, 1 over the partition function, times the sum over all states of the energy of that state times the Boltzmann factor for that state. And so that would be minus mu b, that would be for the down or for the up spin state when it's aligned, times the probability that it's an up state, plus mu b times the probability that it's a down state. Now if you plug in for those values, the mu b would factor out, so you'd have minus mu b out front, and then you would have probability up minus probability down, which would be e to the mu b over kt minus e to the minus mu b over kt over 2 times the hyperbolic cosine of mu b over kt. Now you might notice that this e to the minus or e to the plus mu b over kt minus e to the minus mu b over kt, well, that corresponds to our definition of a hyperbolic sine or cinch, okay? It's shown up here, the cinch of x is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. So, the stuff that's in the numerator of this fraction here is 2 times the hyperbolic sine, okay, of mu b over kt. So now I have the average energy is equal to minus mu b times 2 times the cinch of mu b over kt divided by 2 times the cosh of mu b over kt. The 2's cancel out, and I've got the cinch over the cosh, and of course that's the hyperbolic tangent, or tanch. So that's minus mu b times the hyperbolic tangent of mu b over kt. 
Now this is the average energy for one molecule. If you had a collection of n molecules, then the total internal energy would be n times the energy for one molecule. And so that gives us u, the internal energy, is minus n mu v times the hyperbolic tangent of mu v over kt. Now, I don't know if you remember that far back. You can definitely go back and watch the online lecture. But in a previous lecture, I developed um, this definition of u. And it was pretty painful to get there, right? But now, with our partition function and our definitions of uh, Boltzmann factors, I got there in like three, four lines. So this is amazing. This is quite an advance. And it definitely shows the power of using these Boltzmann factors and partition functions to solve problems. And hey, look, it doesn't have to stop at the average energy. I can also find the average magnetic moment, okay, using the exact same techniques. So mu bar would be 1 over z times mu s times e to the minus e s over kt, right? And using the same techniques, mu could either be plus or minus mu, right? It's either going to be, you know, aligned or anti-parallel to the magnetic field. So that's plus mu times the probability that it's up minus mu times the probability it's down. And that gives me the exact same thing as the energies does before. Um, plus mu times e to the plus mu v over kt minus e to the minus mu v over kt divided by 2 times the hyperbolic cosine of mu v over kt. This yet again is the hyperbolic sine, right? And that gives me cinch divided by cosh, the hyperbolic tangent. And so mu bar is mu times the hyperbolic tangent of mu v over kt. Now that's the average magnetic moment for one molecule. For the collection of n molecules, you would multiply n times the average of 1, and that would give you n times mu times tangent of mu v over kt. We derived all of this back in chapter 3, but it was a lot harder without these rules for our distribution function and our probabilities and all that great stuff. Okay? So, um, that concludes this short, simple little example. I hope you understood that and enjoyed the application um, to Boltzmann factors and partition functions of the two-state paramagnet. As always, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in class.